Hi everybody, this is Laura and welcome to another Hero Arts video. Today during Green Week on the blog, we'll learn how to take an Altoid tin you might normally throw away and turn it into a treasure tin to hold some of your favorite embellishments. To get started, let's talk about polymer clay. My favorite brand is Primo and you can find that at most of your local craft stores or online. We'll be using the pearl colors today, blue, green, and gold pearl because they have a subtle shimmer to them with mica powder and everybody loves a little bit of bling. There are a few tools that are helpful to have when you work with clay. The first of those is a straight blade, a flat blade that is sharp on one end and not on the other. And you'll want to make sure when you pick it up, you pick it up on the not sharp end and you may want to mark the edges with some nail polish or something like that to make sure you don't pick up the sharp side. Believe me, I speak from experience. An acrylic roller comes in all shapes and sizes. Those are very helpful for rolling out clay. Cookie cutters will be used in today's project. Alcohol, just regular rubbing alcohol, is great for cleaning up your tools and your work surface afterwards. And a pasta machine is also extremely helpful for rolling out clay. You can find those in the clay section of your craft store. Um, also, one that would normally be used for food will work. Once you use this for clay, though, you should not use it for food again. It should be dedicated to clay. On the side is a knob that adjusts to different widths so you can get different width sheets of clay that you can roll out, like you see here. To condition your clay, you'll cut up a two ounce block into even slices, lay them down on your work surface, and then you will roll those with your acrylic roller flat until they're a width that can fit through your pasta machine. At that point, you'll wanna run them through your pasta machine several times to condition the clay, folding them every time you put it through, making sure the fold is on the bottom side of the pasta machine. Um, I'm not showing you here because your pasta machine should be secured to a surface. Once it's conditioned, you will have a sheet that looks like this and it'll have a nice sheen to it so you know that it, it is ready. The edges are usually smooth, however, sometimes with drier clay, you'll see that it is not like these rough edges here. But you can use those to your advantage sometimes and use them in your designs. We're going to start off our project with some white clay and we're going to use that for the clouds with this brand new background cloud stamp. As you can see, I have placed some of the white clay into the indentations of the stamp and I'll show you how to do one now. Just take the clay and pick your cloud that you want to create and you can mush it into that indentation. Then take your clay blade and very, very carefully slice away the excess. All that should be left behind is the cloud outline. Be careful when you do this to normally cut away from yourself. I haven't completely filled in all of the clouds there to the right you can see because I'm not going to use that in my tin so I'm not worried about, about that. To do the blue background in the sky, I um, am now going to press the stamp onto a sheet of blue, and you'll notice that the clouds come right off onto it. It's actually dimensional, it's a little hard to see here. You can take a cookie cutter, find this, the image you like the best inside of it, and then trim it out and put it on top of your tin. I'm using a cookie cutter that's just slightly smaller than the top of my tin. Next, you can use a craft blade to clean up your clouds if you'd like. For your deer, you can take a goldish brown sheet of clay and push your stamped image into the clay pretty firmly and lift up. You may want to mist the back of your stamp with some water first, and that can act as a release agent so that it will release more easily from the stamp. Once that is done, you can take a craft knife and cut out the image and just trim around the stamped image. Then arrange your deer onto the 
background. It's okay if some of the legs dangle off. Those will be covered with grass anyways, so you can just trim off the excess. Next, we will want to add our sentiment. I'm using this wonderful stamp set that says Find Joy Every Day. I'm just going to use the Find Joy part of the sentiment. You can place it onto the background. I'm doing it onto the sky here. And then just press down on the part of the image you want to show. You can see it there. It'll show up a lot clearer once we're done baking and we add some brown acrylic paint. For the grass, I'm using the same cutter that I used for the background. I'm not cutting out a complete circle because I don't care about the top part since I'm just doing the grass on the bottom. And then using a craft knife, just freeform the shape of, of grass. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is just whatever you like. Once you've added the grass, we're going to go ahead and add some flowers to it. I'm using a small cutter here that's called a Kemper cutter. It's in a shape of a tiny flower and it has a, a plunger on the end of it so that the clay, if it gets stuck inside, you can remove it. And just randomly place the flowers wherever you want. I have some scrap purple and pink clay that I'm using. To add an eye for the deer, I'm going to use a tiny glass seed bead and you can pick that up with a needle tool and place it right in the eye and press down into the clay to secure it. I'm using glass instead of plastic beads because those will work in the oven just fine. If you use some plastic beads, they can melt, so be careful about that. Cut a strip of the green clay that's the width of the top of your lid. Wrap it around and blend in the edges. And then to complete the front of the lid, take a large circle shape cutter and then one slightly smaller than that, the one that you had used for your background, and you'll get a perfect border. For the bottom of your tin, you can use this wood grain circle stamp and press very hard as you're stamping into the clay. I'm using about a number two setting for on my pasta machine for the clay, the second largest setting on the machine. And you'll see that great texture that's left. Next you can use a cutter that's exactly the same shape as the bottom and you'll notice that the stamp is exactly the same shape as the bottom of an Altoid tin. That was very convenient. And then just with some rough estimates on a ruler, I'm eyeballing it here and adding the side border, cutting a little bit at an angle and then after the clay was overlapped and then pressing it together and blending in the edges. You can go back if you want with a stamp and texture the sides of the, of the tin as well. You won't want to bake together, bake with the lid separate on a piece of cardstock. Once that cools, you can cover it with some brown acrylic paint the cheap kind from the craft store will do, and then take a um, damp cloth and make sure that you rub off any of the excess you don't want, and then you'll, your tin will be complete. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.